by Hammer Down River Excursions. Last year around this time, Idaho Backroads reporter Steve Liebenthal began shooting a series of reports on Idaho salmon that would end up winning a prestigious Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Broadcast Journalism. This spring, the plight of Idaho salmon runs is showing few signs of improvement. Tonight, an update on the status of our most critically endangered fish. It is one of Idaho's most scenic places, a lake that was named for an amazing fish. That's how the lake got its name. You know, the, the Redfish Lake is named for the, for the red fish, the sockeye salmon that return here. In the 1890s, uh, biologists reported as many as 150,000 sockeye salmon returning to all the lakes of the Stanley Basin. But in 1909, the Sunbeam Consolidated Gold Mining Company dumped 300 tons of cement in the Salmon River, building Sunbeam Dam to generate power for its mining operation on the Yankee Fork. And suddenly, the sockeye's migration to and from the Pacific Ocean was completely blocked. A year later, the mine shut down, but the barrier remained in the river. In the mid-1930s, the state and concerned anglers blasted a hole in Sunbeam Dam, and though many thought it was too late for sockeye, nature had provided a way for them to rebound. Uh, nature had built in buffers on that population with a resident population here in the lake that very quickly rebuilt and reestablished the sockeye population so that within 20 years after Sunbeam Dam's removal, we had uh, 4,500 uh, wild adult sockeye returning to this lake once again. Later that decade, new barriers began impeding salmon migration when Bonneville Power began building eight dams on the Columbia and Snake Rivers. And by the mid-1980s, Snake River sockeye were on the brink of extinction. In the early 90s, biologists froze the sperm of a single sockeye salmon, famously known as Lonesome Larry. Eventually, a handful of female sockeye returned, and using Lonesome Larry sperm to fertilize their eggs, biologists began a captive breeding program that would save the species from extinction. For several years, hundreds of sockeye made it back to Idaho. But during the last few years, the returns have been dismal. The last five years, the returns to this lake have been uh, 11, 33, 13, 14, and 11. And now, while the Salmon River is raging with spring runoff, a few wild sockeye smolts are riding that way. And another one. But when they reach the eight slackwater pools that have replaced the naturally flowing river system, warm water, predators, and the stress of the hydroelectric turbines will kill most of them. But Snake River sockeye have proven to be resilient, and as these fish begin their 900-mile journey, people like Pat Ford remain hopeful. They're not extinct yet, and we, Idahoans, Northwesterners, people in this nation, we have the opportunity to make sure they don't go, that they don't go extinct. We can save them. And that to me gives hope. And it's a good day to hope when the little ones are leaving the lake and headed off 900 miles in roaring water to an ocean where they will spend most of their lives before they come back to us. But how long will Idaho sockeye salmon realistically keep coming home to Idaho? And what would it take to save them from extinction? We'll delve into those questions next Wednesday. For Idaho Backroads, I'm Steve Liebenthal.